All right, guys, welcome to second semester of calculus. We're going to start off with unit five, give you a quick overview of what unit five is. So um, we're talking about derivatives again. Um, so in, in chapter one or unit one, we just talked about the derivative rules, the shortcuts for finding derivatives. In unit four, we kind of talked about, you know, well, what is a what is a derivative really? It's it's the limit of a difference quotient. Um, tells you the slope at a single point, and so on and so forth. Unit five um, is talking about what do we do with derivatives? How are they used? What are they useful for? Um, we've seen a couple already in previous units, but in this one, um, we're going to see how they're used. So, um, number one, one of the things that you can use derivatives for is how to find the minimum and maximum values of a function. It's called the extreme value theorem. Where we're going to start today. Um, number two, another thing you can use derivatives for is to find the exact point at which a function reaches its average rate of change. Um, so as you guys know, functions, the, the slope is constantly changing. And, and so um, there, there is an average rate of change, though. And so there's a point in time at which it reaches that exact average value. And that's what we call the mean value theorem. Uh, number three, um, we can use derivatives to examine or determine the behavior and shape of a function. And then finally, um, we can do something called optimization problems, which is where you find the optimal or the best output of a function uh, in work problems. So that's what unit five is all about, just how can we use um, derivatives. So today's lesson, lesson one, we're going to introduce you guys to the concept of we're going to introduce you, guys, introduce you guys to the concept of extrema, okay? So by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to identify the extrema and the critical values of a function by observing its graph. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what are extrema to begin with. The word extrema is a lot like the word extreme, right? And, and that's because extrema means the extreme values. And there's two types of extrema. There's the highest and the lowest ones. The highest one is what we call the maxima, and the lowest is what we call the minima. All right. Now, there's going to be two types of extrema um, that we're going to talk about. One is called the absolute extrema, and then another one which is going to come up on the next slide is the relative extrema. So there's two types. Okay, so let's talk about these things real quick. First of all, absolute extrema is also known as global extrema. Um, they're more commonly referred to as absolute extrema, but I have seen it be called global at times. So just be aware that those are synonyms. So what are absolute extrema? Well, first of all, let's talk about the absolute max. The absolute max is the highest y value of a function on some specified interval, whereas the absolute minimum is the lowest y value of a function on some specified interval. Now this next note I'm about to include may seem unnecessary, but you'll see why it's necessary a little bit later. But just so you know, endpoints can be considered as absolute extrema. So let's kind of bring this to life a little bit with an example. Which one of these points on this graph is the highest point? Well, as you guys can see right here, that is a the highest point. And so we would say y equals 3 is an absolute max. Now notice I said y equals 3. I didn't give the x value, I gave the y value. The reason for that is because extrema are the y values. So the highest y value is y equals 3. Okay. Um, what's the lowest y value on this graph? The lowest y value on this graph is here or here. They're the same, but it doesn't really matter if it's there twice. The point is, is that there's a point that is lower than all the other points. There's a y value that's less than all the other y values on this blue line. And that would be at y equals negative 1 is the absolute minimum. And there you go. Now, I said that endpoints can be considered absolute extrema. So this is an endpoint here, and that's one of the absolute extrema, the absolute min. Okay, um, An endpoint doesn't have to be an absolute extrema like this one here. That's an endpoint, but it's not an absolute extrema. It's not the highest or the lowest point. But 
Um, an endpoint can be one of the highest or lowest points. Now you think, well, duh, Mr. Bailey. Well, the reason I emphasize that is because the next thing we're going to talk about, the endpoints are not allowed to be considered. So that is what absolute extrema are, the highest and the lowest y values. All right. Now let's talk about the other type of extrema, the relative extrema. Now, just like absolute extrema, there, there's a synonym for it. You, most commonly, they're called the relative extrema, but I have heard them referred to as local extrema every so often, so just be aware of that. So what are relative or local extrema? Well, once again, there's the max and a minimum version. So a relative maximum is a y value in a graph that's higher than any point immediately to its right or left. Now, th that's how is this different than the other one? Well, it's different from the absolute max because the absolute max is the one saying, well, what's the highest point overall? The relative max is just saying, okay, is there a point somewhere on the graph that's higher than all the points that are right next to it? So it's more of a local phenomenon than a global phenomenon. In other words, it's right in the immediate neighborhood. Minimum is the same thing. It's a y value in a graph that's lower than any point immediately to its right and left. And in these cases, we do not include the endpoints as possible uh, things to consider. The reason for that is because it needs to be to the right and to the left. And if you're at an endpoint, then you're missing a side. You either don't have a right side or a left side. So um, if that's not making sense, let me see if I can bring it to light with uh, an example here. So let's take a look at this example here once again. Okay, so this we said was a absolute maximum, and this we said was a absolute minimum, which was the same thing as over here. They both had the same y value, so they were both absolute maxes and mins. Um, but let's let's identify something that's not an absolute, but it's a relative extremum. How about right here? This is what we would call a relative maximum. And once again, it's a y value, so technically we'd say it's at y equals zero is a relative maximum. So why is this considered a relative maximum? Well, because this point right here is higher than any point that's right next to it. So, you know, if I were to like, say, create a box around this region here, that's all the points that are really close to it. If I just look in this area right here. This one point is higher than everything else around it. It's not the highest point on the entire graph, but it is higher than every point that's right next to it. Um, now, here's a, here's a better way to identify a relative maximum. Just, just thinking in terms of pictures, it could be like the top of a cusp or the top of a curve. Both of these points here and here would be considered to be relative uh, maxima. Okay, um, so... Why don't we add that to our notes real quick? Relative maxes can look like that. So I and just circle the points that are at the very top. Relative minima then could look like this. They could look like the bottom of a curve or they could look like the bottom of a cusp. Now, um, let's, let's look at our graph again here. Now you guys might be wondering at this point, okay, now Mr. Bailey, I see why this is the relative max, and um, we talked already about why these are, this one here is an absolute max, but Mr. Bailey, this picture looks like this one, so I, how will I know this is an absolute max and not a relative max? Well, it, it's actually both. This is the absolute maximum because it is the highest point, right? But it's still a relative max. In other words, it's possible for a relative maximum to be an absolute maximum. Um, it's both. So because this point not only is at the highest point on the entire graph, but it's also a point that's higher than every point that's right next to it on the left and the right side. Okay. Um, this one down here is the same thing. Remember how we said this was an absolute minimum, right? Well, guess what? It's also a relative minimum. Why is that? Well, look at that point right here. This point, isn't it lower than every point around it? It looks like this picture, doesn't it? So that's a relative minimum, okay? Um, but remember we talked about this one over here? This one was an absolute minimum. 
right? This was another absolute minimum. It was the same thing as this point over here. They had the same y value, correct? Um, but here's the thing. This one is not a relative minimum. So I'm going to put relative min, but I'm going to cross it off. And why? Because when you're talking about relative extrema, you can't include endpoints. Why is that? Because part of the definition of the relative min and max is that you have to, it has to be the, the smallest or biggest point to the right and left. This point is only once, it only has points to the left of it, it doesn't have points to the right. So we would not consider this to be a relative extrema, but it can be an absolute. So there you have it, okay? Um, that's it. Now this one over here, this remember this is not an absolute extrema because it's not the highest or the lowest y value. And it can't be considered a relative extrema because it's an endpoint. So this point over here is nothing. So let, let's kind of review real quick before we go any further. Let's put all these thoughts together. Absolute extrema are the highest or lowest y values on the graph. Relative extrema look like this or they look like this. In other words, they're the top of an upside down cusp or the top of an upside down curve, or relative minima look like the bottom of an upside down of a, of a curve, or the bottom of a uh, cusp. Okay, those are relative. Uh, the dip, one of the differences between these is that relatives cannot be at endpoints, whereas absolute maxes can be at endpoints. Now, before I actually leave this slide completely, um, Hopefully you guys are labeling your picture here as we go. So I've already shown you guys some pictures. Um, relative maximums can look like this. So you would have a relative maximum right here at this point. Um, relative maximums can also look like this. And so you would have a, a relative maximum here at this point. Um, and that's because they're higher than any point to their immediate left or right. Uh, but I want to show you some other pictures of relative maximas. So here's another situation where you can have a relative maximum. Suppose we had something that looked like the following. It's kind of like a, a jump here, if you will. We have a solid dot here and an open dot here. Well, this point is higher than anything to the left, and it's also higher than the points immediately to the right of it. So this is still considered a relative maximum. And another picture to consider is the following. Um, in this case, we have, this would be a relative maximum because this point is higher than any point to its immediate left or right also. So these are um, like piecewise function type pictures where you could have a relative max where it's broken up into pieces. Um, in the same way, you could have the same situations um, with relative minima. So you, you have this situation and this situation, which we've already talked about, in both of those cases, the relative minimum would be at the bottom of those pictures. Um, however, you could have something to the effect of a graph that looks like this. <clears throat> in which case, this solid dot would be a relative minimum because it's lower than every point to the left and right. Or you could have some situation like this, where there's a solid dot below that, because now that point is lower than every point to its immediate left and right. So in those two cases there, uh, we have all the different kinds of pictures where you can expect to have a relative max or a relative minima. Okay, so those pictures are nice to have in your notes. Um, let's go ahead and move on. So let's go ahead and do an example where we identify all this stuff. So example one, I've given you a piecewise function and your responsibility is going to be to identify all the possible extrema. All right, well, let's start with absolute extrema. What is the absolute highest and lowest y value on this graph? Well, um, the highest this graph seems to go is here and or here. Okay, those are absolute maxes. So let's let's put that on our answer sheet here. Absolute maximum. And, and what is the absolute max there? What's the y value? The y value is at eight. Okay, so my absolute maximum value on this graph is eight. Let's see if we can find the lowest value, the absolute minimum. 
Well, if this down here were a solid dot, then I would say that's my lowest point. But that's not a solid dot, is it? That's an arrow. It just keeps going down forever, more and more. It never reaches any specific lowest value. So therefore, this graph does not have an absolute minimum. It goes down infinitely far. There is no absolute minimum. All right, let's go ahead and find all of our relative extrema. So let's start by looking for any relative maxes. All right, so let's look for the top of a curve. I see one right there. So that would be considered a relative maximum, and that y value there is 4. So we could say y equals 4. Um, I don't see any other tops of curves. Um, you might be tempted to say here, but that's not really the top of a curve. And the reason why is because if I sit, were to say this point, yes, this point is higher than everything on its left side, but not on its right side. On its right side, it's going in an upward direction. So it's not higher than points on the left and the right. So I would not include that one. Um, how about right here at these black dots? Are, are these relative maximas and minimas? Okay, well, this one is a, a, an absolute, or I'm sorry, relative maximum. It would be y equals 8. Why is this a relative maximum? Because look right on the left side of it. Are, is this point right to the left of it? Is it lower than this one? Yes, it is. All right. Now let's look to the to the right of it. Well, the right of it starts down here and it goes right here. So the, the point immediately, the first point to the right of it is down here below it. So is this black dot higher than this space? Yes, it is. So this black dot is higher than everything to the left and everything to the right. Not everything, but the points immediately next to it. And therefore, that is a I'm sorry, relative maximum. Let's find another black dot here. How about this one? Is this point higher than the dots immediately to its left and right? Well, let's see. The first point to its left is right here. If we just kind of look at that area. Are these points all lower than this dot? Yes. Let's look at the points immediately to its right. Are these points in this area lower than this? Yes. So that's another relative max. So we would say y equals 5 is another relative max because that point is higher than any of the points that are immediately to its left and right. All right, so let's see if we can find any relative maxes. I don't see any more relative maxes here, but I do see a relative min. Do you guys see where it is? It's right down here. This is a relative minimum. Why? Because if you pick a point on the left, to the left of it, and to the right of it, those points are higher than this. So this point is lower than every point to its left and right. And therefore, we would say at y equals negative 4, we have a relative minimum. Okay, so we've got some relative maxes um, located at here and here and here. And we have a relative minimum located here. And we have an absolute max here and here, and there is no absolute minimum. Okay, so let's see how you guys do here. I'm going to give you guys a student practice. See if you guys can identify the absolute maxes and absolute mins on this graph and on this graph. Okay, so pause absolute extrema and relative extrema. So pause the video here, see if you can identify those, and uh, when you are done, unpause the video and see what you got. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at these answers here. Um, we have a relative minimum right here at y equals 0, and that's because this point is lower than any point to its immediate left or right, the bottom of a curve, in other words. Uh, this point up here, we have an absolute max and relative max at y equals 2. It's an absolute max because it's the highest point on the graph overall, it's a relative max because it is higher than any point to its immediate left or right. Uh, down here, we have an absolute minimum because it's the lowest point on the graph, and it's an endpoint, so it cannot be a relative extrema. So that's that one. Now, this other graph over here has got some tricky stuff on it. 
Now it actually only has a relative and absolute minimum right here. So let's talk about why this is an absolute and relative minimum first, and then we'll talk about why there's nothing else on the graph. It's a relative minimum because this point is, well, absolute, let's, let's start with absolute. It's an absolute minimum because there's no y value on this graph that's lower than this. It's a relative minimum because any point to the immediate left and right of it are higher. Or in other words, this point is lower than any point to its immediate left and right. And therefore, it is a relative minimum also. Okay. Now let's talk about the other points. You might have called this one up here a relative maximum, but it's not. And the reason why is because that point doesn't exist. Now you might think, well, what about this point right below it? Wouldn't that count? Well, no, technically it wouldn't. Let me, let me explain why. Because that point right below it, maybe you put that point here. Well, guess what? There's another point after it that's even closer right there. And there's another one after that, which is even closer right there. You can get infinitely close to this and never really reach that point. And so there's always another point that's higher than the point before it on this line. And therefore, you can't really ever find a point that's higher than any other point. So anytime your endpoint is an open dot, it's no longer able to be considered as a relative extrema, um, or I should say a relative uh, an absolute maximum or minimum. All right. Now, what about this point right here? You might have thought maybe this was some sort of relative extreme. It's definitely not the absolute. You can tell it's not the absolute because it's not the highest or lowest point in the graph. But maybe you thought this point would be a relative extrema. Well, let me explain why it's not a relative extrema. On the left side over here, the points that are immediately to the left of this dot are higher, and the points that are immediately to the right of it are lower. So this point is not the highest or lowest point when compared to the points right next to it. So it's neither. Um, next, you would look maybe here. Maybe you guys thought this was a point that was something. And once again, it couldn't be the absolute min or max because it's not the highest or lowest point. Uh, for this point, there are y values that are higher than it. So for instance, like right here, there's a y value that's higher than this. So this cannot be the absolute maximum. So maybe you thought it was a relative min or max. Well, let, let's take a look why. Um, the points on to the immediate left and right, it's a little bit ambiguous. Um, so I, I drew you guys a, a picture here earlier. I said if you had this kind of a picture, this would be definitely considered to be a relative max. Or if I gave you a picture like this, that would definitely be considered as a relative minimum. But in this case, when you put the dot inside here, it gets a little bit confusing. When you put the dot inside of the, the U shape, if you will. Um, and the reason for that is because, yes, it is lower than any point to its immediate left and right in this area. But you know, if you go out a little bit further, it's not. So that's a little bit confusing, but just so you guys know that this one is not considered to be a relative extrema of any kind. All right, so let's take a look at another example. It says find the value of the derivative at each relative extrema. And it might help if you guys can, I remember that derivative just means the slope of your function at that point. So find the slope at each of the relative extrema. Well, for the first graph, my relative extrema is located right here. Okay, now what's the slope of my function at that point? Well, the tangent line would indicate what the slope is, and the tangent line at that point would seem to be a horizontal line. So we would say that the derivative is zero. Okay, let's take a look at, let's skip the middle one. Let's go over here. Um, right here is another relative extrema, and right here is another relative extrema. We have a relative max here and a relative minimum here. Well, let's draw some tangent lines. I didn't draw that one very good. It's supposed to be a flat line again, not, not slanted. And then this one is also a flat line. All right, well, once again, at the relative extrema, 
the slopes are zero. So it seems like we might have an interesting little conclusion here. It seems like anytime you're at a relative extreme of the slope is zero. Okay, and that makes sense because if your graph is doing this, or if it's doing this, that creates a flat line because your graph goes from an increasing slope to a decreasing slope, or from a decreasing slope to an increasing slope. But either way, if you're changing slopes from positive to negative or negative to positive slopes, it has to cross a slope of zero somewhere and make a flat tangent line, right? So we have a neat little conclusion there. Anytime you're at one of these smooth relative extrema, it would seem that you end up with a slope of zero. But let's look at the middle picture. This one's not smooth. This one has a cusp. So that's still a relative extrema. That still would be considered to be a relative minimum. Um, but the problem is, is that at these points, the slope does not exist. So we have, we have some conclusions now from this. And, and our conclusion is the following. If you have a relative extrema on a graph, then either that point will be have a slope or a derivative of zero or does not exist. So that brings us to the definition of a new word here, which we're going to call the critical value. A critical value is an x value. Now, that's important to, to note there. We're talking about an x value, right? Um, an x value of a function such that um, either the derivative is zero at that point or the derivative is undefined at that point. And that's what we would call a critical value. And why do we care about critical values? Why do we care about where the derivative is zero or where the derivative is undefined? Because as we saw in the guide, last guided practice, if that's the case, then that point, f of c, might be a relative extrema. It doesn't have to be, but it may be. Okay. So relative extrema will always be critical values, but critical values are not necessarily relative extrema. Let me illustrate why that is. So let's take this function, for instance. If I were to take the derivative of this function, and I want to find out where this derivative equals 0, and solve for x, dividing by 3 and then taking the square root, we're going to find that we end up with 0. So this is what we would call a critical value because it's a place where the derivative equals 0. Okay? And when we look at our graph of this function, x cubed, it looks like this, and you guys can see that, yeah, sure enough, we would have a horizontal tangent line right there. Okay? But is that a relative extrema? Is that point higher or lower than any point to its immediate left or right? No, it's not. It's, it's higher than the points on the left, but it's lower than the points on the right. So it's not like the bottom of a valley or the peak of a mountain. It's, it's neither. Um, and so critical values are not always relative extrema. But relative extrema will always be critical values. Which is why when we did this example here, these were all relative extrema. And therefore, they definitely either had a slope of zero or undefined. And therefore, these relative extrema gave us critical values. This critical value was 3. This critical value was 0. This critical value was pi over 2. And this critical value was 3 pi over 2. So relative extrema always tell you where a critical value is. But critical values don't always tell you where relative extrema are. Okay, so we got to be careful. It's a one-way street. Um, so why do we care about critical values? Because they help us to find where a possible relative extrema is. And why does that matter to us? As I mentioned in the beginning of class, one of the things that derivatives are used for is to help us find the minimum and maximum values of a function. So that's why we care about critical values, because if you can find a critical value, a place where the derivative equals zero is undefined, then you may possibly have found where a relative extrema exists. So let's go ahead and take a look at example two here. 
Example two says identify all of the critical values and determine if that critical value um, yields a relative min or a max. Okay, well, first of all, let's, let's go ahead and remember what, what a critical value is. A critical value is where the derivative is equal to zero or is undefined. Okay, um, so let's let's look for our let's look on our graph here. Where is the derivative undefined on this graph? We'll have to think back to unit four really quick. So this is a flashback for you guys to unit four point five. These are all the places where a function is not differentiable. If it has a if it's not continuous, in other words, if there's a hole, a gap, or a vertical asymptote, or if there's a cusp, or if there's a vertical tangent line. So three cases where a function's derivative does not exist. It doesn't exist whenever you have a whole gap or jump or a vertical asymptote, or a cusp, or a vertical tangent line. So those are your three situations that you're looking for. So let's look at our graph on our current line. And as you guys can see here, um, there is at this point right here, if I were to do my best to try to try to draw a tangent line, what would that tangent line look like at x equals one there? Well, hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing there. It would I'm not doing this very good. It's kind of hard to draw, <laughs> but um, it's, it would be a vertical tangent line. So at x equals one, we have a critical value. Um, because the slope is undefined at that point. Matter of fact, I think what I'll do is I'll write that underneath of where it says undefined. So x equals 1 is a critical value. And we have a cusp right here. So at x equals 3, we have another critical value because the slope is undefined at a cusp. The slope is also undefined. whenever a function's not continuous. So I, I, we can estimate that to be at about 3.5. So these are three places where the derivative doesn't exist, and those therefore are all critical values. Now the question is, which one of these critical values are relative extrema? Well, this one's not a relative extrema because the points on the left are higher and the points on the right are lower. So it's not lower than both sides, and it's not higher than both sides. So that's not a relative extrema. This one is not a relative extrema, because even though it's lower than the points on the right, it's equal to the points on the left. That looks like a flat line to me. And so that's not a relative extrema either. And this one has, well, and this point doesn't even exist, so it can't be a relative extrema. Anytime you have an open dot, um, it can't be a relative extrema because there's no y value there. So there are none of these are relative extrema. So as you guys can see, even though a point may have a slope that doesn't exist or is um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a relative extrema. Um, now we, we don't want to forget about this though. Relative extrema also happen where the slope equals zero. Now, um, up here, you know, it looks a lot like the slope would be zero, right? So I think that it would be safe to say that at x equals zero, we have a slope of zero. And pretty much every point on the interval from two to three looks like it's zero to me. It's kind of hard to tell where maybe, maybe it is flat here or not, but we'll say um, any point on the interval 2 to 3. Okay, so any point on the interval from 2 to 3 looks like it would be a zero slope to me. It's very flat, just going by looks. Um, but once again, this can't be a relative extrema because it's an endpoint, and none of these points here would be relative extrema because no matter what point you picked on this interval, 
it's not lower or higher than both the right and left sides. So uh, we have no relative extreme on this graph, but we have plenty of critical values, okay? And that's a little bit bleak. Um, the, the point is, actually, we, we want to look for critical values because usually critical values do tell us where relative extrema are. But I, I picked a lot of different situations here to show you where you could have a critical value, where the slope is either zero or undefined, but you don't necessarily end up with a relative extrema. Let's, let's have you guys try one and see what yours looks like. All right, so why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video here, see if you can find all the critical values, and then see if any of them are relative extrema. And when you unpause the video, um, you'll have the answers available for you. All right, so here we go. Um, critical values, once again, are those places where the derivative either equals zero or is undefined. Now, um, there's a lot of places where the derivative equals zero. There's a lot of places where the tangent line is flat. Here's one, here's one, and here's one. And those occur at x values of negative 2, 0, and positive 2. Now, at x equals negative 2, that point is a relative max. And at x equals positive 2, that point is a relative min. But at 0, that's neither. So we're not going to call that a, a relative extrema. Now, we also want to look for critical values in the places where the derivative is undefined. That would be if you had a hole, a gap, a jump, a cusp, or a vertical tangent line. And quite honestly, I don't see any of those things here. So there are no critical values that come from an undefined slope on this graph. So we do have three critical values that come from a slope of 0, though. So those three critical values are negative 2, 0, and 2. And two of those are relative extrema, negative 2, is a place where we have a relative max, and 2 is a place where we have a relative min. Um, and just to kind of be more formal here, I don't want you guys, I, I, I do this quite frequently myself, so we have to be careful. Negative 2 is not a relative max. It's where the relative max happens. The relative max is the y value, or f of negative 2. And the relative min is not 2, the relative min is at 2. And so the relative min is actually the y value at 2, which is f of 2. So there you guys have it. <clears throat> and that'll do it for our lesson today. And so until uh, next time, have a good one.